is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He. Lift up the banners, let the anthems rise, through Christ our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He. Oh, oh, oh. great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us continue to pray for the world. Let's also continue to pray for people who are affected by this uh, corona virus. A lot of people, it's also increasing in certain parts, even of, in our own country, even in our own city. Let us pray in a very special way that people may stay safe at the same time uh, they might also get whatever they need to continue their livelihood, especially God, our provider, might uh, continue to take care of his people. And may people also experience God's goodness, especially during these tough times. To prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us ask the Lord's pardon and forgiveness by saying, I confess to Almighty God, Unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, Grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 25, verses 13 to 21. Agrippa the king and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to welcome Festus. And as they stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man left prisoner by Felix, and when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews gave information about him, asking for sentence against him. I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accusers face to face and had opportunity to make his defense concerning the charge laid against him. When therefore they came together here, I made no delay, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. When the accusers stood up, they brought no charge in his case of such evils as I supposed. But they had certain points of dispute with him about their own superstition and about one Jesus who was dead but whom Paul asserted to be alive. 
Being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding them. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of the emperor, I commanded him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let our response be. The Lord has set his sway in heaven. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. Response The Lord has set his sway in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, as strong is his love for those who fear him, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. Response The Lord has set his sway in heaven. The Lord has set his sway in heaven and his kingdom is ruling over all. Give thanks to the Lord, all his angels, mighty in power, fulfilling his word. Response The Lord has set his sway in heaven. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. I will not leave you desolate, says the Lord. I go, but I will come back to you, and your hearts will be full of joy. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Chapter 21, verses 15 to 19. After the meal, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to them, Feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you girded yourself and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish to go. This is said to show by what death he was to glorify God. And after this he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, we see uh, the whole episode of St. Paul on the trial being continuing for a pretty long time and if you read the Acts a bit closely you get the feeling of how much of pain St. Paul would have been going through. A person one who 
uh, suffered, he, he, he worked hard to preach the good news. Variety of, uh, of uh, suffering. And now the Jews were, very many times they were planning to uh, kill him. Not, not by uh, going to the tribunal, but very many times they even also planned uh, to kill him through ambush. But that's how the Roman guards prevent him and they take him on a trial and he is moved from place to place and so many people come in to interrogate him and a bit of uh, uh, quickly we will just give a, I will, I will give a little glimpse on how he was interrogated. It was, uh, it, we all, it all started with from the time he was brought by the tribune Lysias uh, to Felix. Felix is a, uh, was a proconsul and uh, Felix is the one who first uh, interrogates St. Paul and um, Felix and his wife Drusilla, both of them together call St. Paul and, and try to talk to him and find out what exactly is the position of St. Paul and which has a parallel of uh, Herod Antipas and um, I know his wife you also remember how they, the, the, the episode of um, John the Baptist. Something similar these two call uh, Saint, Saint Paul and Drusilla uh, herself is the daughter of uh, Herod Agrippa I and he was the one who, who understood uh, in killing of Saint James people were very happy and he, he realized if you start persecuting the people who are following Christ he is going to uh, going to be in good books of the people. So he is, uh, she is her own, uh, his own daughter and these two interrogate St. Saint, Saint Paul and uh, pretty soon it is said Felix got discouraged and he was very upset with the teachings of St. Paul. You know why? He was not happy with the three concepts. One is on justice, Christ's understanding of justice, self-control and the future judgment. He was not happy at all and uh, he said uh, this, is, uh, this is not applicable or this is not a very interesting teaching and that is why he didn't want to continue with St. Paul. But he was also expecting to get some bribe from St. Paul. That is the reason also he was prolonging it because he knew for sure that he was innocent. So he wanted to save him provided he gets some money. He was not very much Im Im impressed with this teaching because it was going against truth and this is why when Jesus himself was questioned uh, by Pilate uh, and Jesus says you uh, talks about truth Pilate says truth what, what does that mean he does not even know uh, what truth was all about and Felix was the one who, who was expecting money and he was not happy with the teachings of the church or teachings of Christ and then he just leaves Paul in the custody and then he does not give any verdict on that. Festus comes and takes up the, the, the power after, after Felix and again Paul was uh, in, the, in, the, in the custody. And it was at the time of uh, Festus, he calls again like Pilate that Jesus being sent to Herod, he also invites Herod Agrippa, the son of Herod Agrippa the first and he comes with his uh, sister Bernice, that's what we read it in today's reading and they also come and they uh, want to listen to St. Paul and it is if you go through the chapters Paul himself will give a narration of his own conversion and he, he, he would even go to the point of even converting Herod himself. So you see how St. Paul was going through this trial uh, from persons to person Felix, Festus, Herod and finally Paul very clearly said you take me to Rome let me be let me be judged by the emperor himself I don't want to go to Jerusalem nor I want to be uh, by, uh, judged by anyone else so you see how the prolonged journey and we see this man holding on to truth trying to talk to people trying to put his ideas across to people who do not know truth. Very sadly, very sadly, people who hold on to truth, they have to fight a system which is completely corrupt. 
very difficult to even make a meaning to this system. Self-control, righteousness, future judgment, they are not very interesting concepts for the, for the systems, for the, for the, for the people who, 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 who are interested in money, power, people who go by money, power, nothing of value exists there. You know number of cases how many people are still in the court case or uh, you are struggling with your neighbor, you are struggling with one particular issue for, for so many years of so many number of years and you are innocent, you have the truth, you try to put it across and they don't understand. It's not that they are acting as if they don't understand, they don't know the truth. And what do you do there? You stand there as innocent lamb talking the truth and you see literally Paul pleading for his life. His life is at stake. He says, I'm innocent, I didn't do anything wrong. But nothing is holding good. Innocent voice, I really feel the pain of St. Paul struggling in front of this. Various people, be it Sanhedrin, be it Romans, or be it uh, Herod, kings, emperors, rulers, chief priests, high priests, in front of all this big system, big people, big power, big money, this man is voicing out his truth. It's not heard. Same problem Jesus himself faced. So lesson number one from the, from, the, from the reading of today, the first reading is this, dear friends, we need to stand for the truth. And of course, we have to go through this trial. You will be taken to a place where you don't make any sense to them. And they, they are playing with your life. It's life and death scenario. That was what has happened to Jesus himself. This is what is actually happening to Paul himself. Very, very sad situation, but it's worth it. He, st he stands for the truth because he was, in, he was passionately in love with Christ. And moving on to the gospel, beautiful gospel, which, is, uh, which we have heard very many times. And we see uh, Jesus asking the question to St. Peter uh, thrice and Peter gets offended. Peter gets, he feels very bad. Lord, I know I love you. Why do you repeatedly ask me? It's, it's three times. What are you trying to hint? Jesus is trying to hint at Peter, telling him, listen, you are the one. When I told him I'm going to die, he said, I'll also come. I'll also stand by you. In, the, in John chapter 13, you will see from 37 and 38 verse, he, will, he said, I will stand by you, a boastful proclamation of his love. I will stand by you even in the times of trials and afflictions. But Jesus very clearly at that time itself said, you will deny me thrice. Without your denial, nothing is going to even happen. And that is what has actually happened in, in St. Peter's life. And Jesus here hints at St. Peter, telling him, your love for me itself is my gift. It is my gift that you are able to love me. Initially, you were, you were trying to project your boastful love, saying, I will stand by you. You were not. You failed miserable. But now that I am giving it as a gift, you will stand for me. You will even die for me because your love is active and alive because it is a gift that is given by me directly to you. And we see how the love takes shape. And how this love is very real. It is given by Jesus himself. Even to love God, we need that gift coming from Jesus himself. For which we need to pray. And this is the, the struggles St. Peter underwent. Finally, he is able to get that gift and he remains strong. So my dear friends, truth. Now we see love. And finally, we also see fidelity. He tells Peter, you love me? Tend my sheep. It's my sheep, I give it to you. You are not the owner. You are just a manager. You are just a servant. Dear friends, this is something which we, we should never forget. Our children, we are, not, we are not the owners. Our students, we are not the owners. Our parishioners, we are not the owners. Our community members in, in the religious communities, we are not owners. We are custodians. They are the sheep of Christ himself. It is my responsibility to be faithful to the one who has entrusted this job to me, this mission to me. I have to take care of my sheep as my own, but I'm not the owner. I need to be more responsible. 
I have to be faithful. I need to show my fidelity to the one who has given me this mission. So dear friends, taking these three beautiful lessons from the readings of today, we can cherish our own lives. Let us stand for the truth. It is going to be a life and death struggle. But at the end of it, resurrection is always waiting. This is something very nice to hear. Love of God is gift from God himself. I cannot say I will love God with my, all my might. No, I can make it in, an effort. Yes, I need to make an effort. But ultimately, me loving God itself is a gift. Let's pray for that gift. And finally, we are all managers. We are all stewards. We are all servants. We are all interested with, with our own mission. Nothing that has been entrusted to us is our own. Therefore, I need to be faithful to the one who has entrusted this mission to me. Dear friends, let's pray for these three beautiful qualities through this Mass. Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will live love and trust in His presence daily. Live. I surrender. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcometh Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and George Anthony Samia Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul since I cannot at this moment 
receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.